So I've shown you how to convert a binary number to a decimal number just for review. Let's actually do one. Let's say I have this binary value uh, 0, 1, 0, 1. Well, how do we do that? Well, this is 1, and this is 2, and this is 4, and this is 8. So 0, 8 is 1, 4. 0, 2 is 1, 1. That gives us the number 5. Well, how do we go the other way? Let's say, let's say I want to convert the number 96 into binary, the decimal 96 into its binary representation. Well, how would we do that? Pause the video and see if you can think of how we would do that. Make an attempt, and whether it's right or wrong, it'll still be useful for your mental exercises, and then come back and unpause the video when you've done that. Okay, well, here's another way to think of this, this problem here. Say you came to me, and I was a sales clerk, and you wanted something I sold, and it cost $4. But all you had in your wallet was a $100 bill. Okay, so you hand me the $100 bill, and I have to make change, which is going to be $96 here. And so what what is the best way we could do that? Well, I could give you 96 ones, but small bills are hard to come by. Just sometimes like pennies. I hear there's a penny shortage just simply because we have to deal with pennies constantly. But then... um. I could give you a bunch of fives and a one, which would eventually we'd make 95 and then add one, and that would be 96. Or, and this is generally the most likely case, and probably the case you would expect, and probably the case I would perform if I was your sales clerk, I would give you nine ten dollar bills, uh, one five dollar bill, and one one dollar bill. So we break it up into the largest dollar bills that I could give you. But let's just say I was out of five dollar bills. Okay, well then, I'd be forced to give you six one dollar bills. All right, so when we're thinking in base 10, we have to assume we don't have any five dollar bills. So base 10, five dollar bills are all gone. We have to use one hundred dollar bills, one dollar bills, one thousand dollar bills, which don't exist. Or I don't think they do, $10,000 bills, that kind of thing. Right? Well, how did we come to this conclusion that I'm going to give you nine $10 bills and six $1 bills? Well, it's easy. We just said, well, what's the largest dollar bill that goes into this? Well, it's 10. Okay? 100 is too big. All right? We're, now we're doing some mental division here, right? We say, well, the $10 bill, how many 10s can I put in there? Well, I can put nine 10s in there. And, okay, well, what's left over? That's six. So then I have to give you six ones. All right? And one is the largest a denomination I can give you when it comes to just six dollars here. I can't give you a ten dollar bill for six because that's too large. So I have to do the one dollar bill. But I have to give you six of them. So essentially that's how we make change. We go with the largest, the most largest <laughs> denomination I can give you, the m m biggest number of them, and then we break it down from there. Well, converting this number to binary, the steps are pretty much the same, except in binary we're dealing with powers of two. So we have two dollar bills and we have four dollar bills and so on and so forth. So let me get my binary color out here and I'm just going to over here write our our dollar bill denominations out here. So oh we also have one. So there's one, two, four, eight, sixteen, th oh, 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 let me, thirty-two, thirty-two, sixty-four, 128 and 256 and I can keep going to 512 and so on and so on and so forth. I guess we'll stop at 512. Good enough. So using that same mental logic where we said well we can get 10 we can get nine ten dollar bills into this and six one dollar bills into this. Well now our dollar bill denominations are one two four eight sixteen eight eight. eight. So what is the largest uh, amount or largest dollar bill denomination we can put in here? Well we can do one, but on 96 ones, that's not ideal. Let's let's start roughly from the top. 512 does not go into 96. Okay, if if I owed you $96 and instead gave you a $512 bill, well, you'd probably come to my store a lot more often, wouldn't you? 256, same problem. It doesn't go into 96. 128, same problem. All right, so then, oh, 64, though. I can get 164 in there. All right, so let's... Let's uh, get our digits up here, and, and uh, I'll just 
group them up like this. And I know I haven't generally put them into cells like this, but I'm trying to get you to think a little bit like an odometer or like how a computer actually stores it. There's literally room for this. So this is the ones place. This is the twos place. This is the fours place. This is the eights place. This is the sixteens place. This is the thirty twos place. This is the sixty fours place and one twenty eights place. And I could go on. Oh, why not? Let's do two more. Let's be consistent with what we have down here. So 256. It's hard to draw with the mouse. I could buy a stylus, but I have actually found I'm better at drawing with the mouse than I am with the stylus. Okay. So 64 goes into 96 one time. So I'll give you one $64 bill. What's that going to leave us with? 64. 96 minus 64. 4 from 6 is 2. 6 from 9 is three. Oh, oh, well, look at that. That's a perfectly even $32 bill. So I'll give you a $32 bill. And then I don't need to give you any more bills in these denominations here. That works just fine. There you go. Okay, let's see if we can get a more interesting example. Don't blink. I'm going to erase all these zeros and pause the video so I don't take your time doing that. Okay, and now that that's gone let's erase our sample problem and let's see if we can come up with a more interesting example so let's say uh let's let's do 173 okay so same thing we did before uh how many 128 dollar bills can i put into 173 well i just gave it away i should have started at 512 i can't put any 512 i can't put any 256 but i can put one one twenty-eight dollar bill in there. And now, oh, now I have to do subtraction, and it looks like I'm gonna have. To, okay, so eight from three. Well, we have to. We we don't. I can't take away eight from three, right? And so we have to borrow a ten, right? So let's take a ten dollar bill out here and convert it to ones. So that's gonna give me thirteen ones, right? And eight from thirteen ones. Well, that's five, right? And then two from six. Uh, that's four, and then one from one is zero. So zero, four, five. All right, we t we've done one, one twenty-eight dollar bill. Okay, there we go. We didn't have any five twelves. Didn't have any two fifty-six. They're too large. Okay, so forty-five. Well, can I put a sixty-four dollar bill in the forty-five? Can I take that away? No, I cannot. Oh, but then our next one is thirty-two. Well, I can put a thirty-two in here. So let's just say thirty-two. I'm going to grab a one. $32 bill from our binary bill base, and 2 from 5 is 3, and 3 from 4 is 1. Okay, can I put any 16s into that? No, I can't do any 16s. Can I do an 8? Yes, I can do an 8. So let's put the 8 in here, and we've subtracted 8 from 13 before, right? So that's that's 5. Okay, good. Can I do a $4 bill with the 5? Yes, I can put a $4 bill into here, so that's going to leave us with 1. And then can I put a $2 bill into one? No, I can't do that. But I can do a $1 bill into one. So there we go. That's all of our money gone. We have one $1 bill. So converting from decimal to binary is not that hard. It's just that division there. And the binary value for, uh, what do we start out with? 173 here is 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1. And we could verify this in two ways. We can convert it back to decimal just by saying 128 plus 32 plus 8 plus 4 plus 1 would give us 173 and we can also use the Windows calculator that I showed you early. Let's just bring that up here just because we haven't seen it for a while. Let's let's punch this binary value in here. Um, go right here and we'll say 10101. One. I could do the leading zeros. Notice here this is a 64-bit calculator so they have all the zeros even though none of them are our ones right now, but let's let's just uh, let's do it. Zero zero. Notice the adding the zeros don't do anything. One zero one zero one one zero one. There you go. We've put our binary value in. What is that in decimal? It's one seventy three. So anyway, converting back and forth between decimal to binary and binary to decimal, uh, not too difficult.